Lay down. Just lay down right here. Come. Come here. Yeah, okay, there. Perfect. Hello everyone, this is Trenna at John's French Repair and I'm in the shop today with this really beautiful um, art deco, I guess I would call it, uh, buffet or side table. And we're not refinishing the whole thing, but it has some pretty serious issues. So let me show you some details on this one. All right, so it's been refinished by the customer and they don't need it refinished. It was actually in storage for a moving company. And what has happened is the top has gotten some water damage. So we've got some pretty serious lifting veneer all across the back. I think the water run down there. And we've got some pieces missing. So some pretty serious veneer damage. And I think what happens is when these tops get wet, the substrate is solid. It shrinks because it's the, the grain is this way. So it shrinks and then buckles the veneer up because it has still been stuck here, but it has to give somewhere. So that's what it does. So basically we do need to release that veneer and glue it back down and do some patches. We're not gonna be replacing the whole piece because that's just way more work involved with this uh, waterfront or waterfall front piece. So, and we, we can do a good job of, of uh, repairing these pieces that are missing. So the rest of the piece is just gonna get a cleanup. Um, we'll make sure that it's all clean and looking good. But basically on this video, we're gonna be focusing on the veneer repairs on this top. So let's get at it. After growing up in my dad's restoration shop and learning everything he knows, I'm continuing on with the business in my own shop. And after 25 years, I can truly say, I love this job and I just have to share it with you. Whether it's a priceless 300 year old hand carved piece of history or just an ordinary table or dresser, I pour my heart into each and every piece a customer brings me. I'm Trenna and this is John's Furniture Repair. Okay, so basically what we're gonna start to do on this section, I'm just gonna work in a couple sections here, is uh, release that veneer from the back here where it's still stuck down so that we can pull it back this way. Now, this has been sitting like this for a while, so this veneer is gonna have a hard time laying down. So we're gonna be adding uh, water and heat and that's gonna soften the wood fibers so that they can do that. So I'm just gonna spray on some water here and I've got a heat gun. And we're gonna get it nice and soaked and water underneath as well, just so we can start lifting that veneer. And then we'll start working with uh, some knives and slowly try to coerce this back to come up. And I think we need to go about from here, uh, probably all the way to the end. Yep. All right, so we've got that whole section lifted off from the back and there are a couple of staples down there and stuff like that. Anyways, the only bad thing about making this veneer wet again is it does kind of expand the veneer in between, but the only option here is to wet it or else it's just going to crack all along the, 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 um, where it was lifted. So that's okay, we're just gonna force it down with a lot of pressure and then we'll probably end up, you know, shaving off the little lifted areas and if there's any extra gluing areas, we'll have to do that in two rounds. So basically, I'm gonna get some glue under everything and we've got a board here with some plastic tape on it and we're gonna be forcing everything right down, big clamps from the top to the bottom of this cabinet and leaving it for quite a while just to really force everything back down in place as best we can. And uh, 
I might try to use less water on these parts, but I really don't think it's gonna work out for me. So let's get some glue in here. Just gonna kind of start it with a big puddle of glue and then get my putty knife. And I am using PVA glue here. You could use hide glue here. They kind of work interchangeably. Both are reversible um, with heat and moisture. I just don't have my uh, hide glue warmed up this morning. So that's the only reason why I chose PVA glue today. Because it does take about, I don't know, half an hour to warm up. And I'm impatient. And I'll just go keep on pushing that glue until it stops easily popping up in the top there. So it wants to go for a while. And you can actually see under here, the substrate has cracked right there. And that is definitely what happened is the substrate shrunk and it's moving and this veneer just couldn't hang on. So I'll get glue in all this, this and we'll clamp it up. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so I've got that one and some cowls over here, pressing down this board. Um, could add another one here, but I think that's enough pressure. So I'm gonna try no water and just heat on this one, just to see if I can get that um, off without so many wrinkles in the veneer. Okay, so that worked out actually not too bad and I think I'll be able to get that um, length. There's a little bit of tension right where it, um, it was lifted there, but hopefully I'll be able to get that to relax with the glue and lay back down. So I'll just get this area full of glue here and I've got another um, board and we'll do the same thing. Yeah, you do. Okay, so it's the next day and we've got the clamps off. As I suspected, we did have a couple of cracks and because the glue expands the veneer, it kind of creates a ridge, which I've kind of, it just kind of popped off with the, the board. But that's okay, we've got enough of a flatness surface that we can sand that down. This one, same thing. We've got, you know, the ridges. They didn't come off with the, the paper, but um, we can kind of carve those down. We've got a couple of patches here. This patch shifted slightly down, which happens when I should have had this taped. So I might try to loosen this up and just push it back into these little um, areas that are missing here. So lots of glue cleanup. It's a mess like I thought it would be, um, but we're getting there. We got everything nice and solid down. This piece here was pretty good. We just had a couple of losses. Um, and you can see right here is what I was talking about before. This is where it buckled. All these little um, horizontal cracks here along the veneer. These are all those buckle points that, because I didn't use water here, it kind of uh, decided that it's gonna break, but it's okay. We'll be able to feather that out. These um, are a couple of putty spots that I need to um, blend in after, because they're not that big for uh, a veneer patch and then a couple of these areas that are long cracks in the veneer we're just gonna have to use putty there but we will patch in um, some of the bigger losses especially on this one so I'm just gonna sand down this 
this one here and then what I'll do is before we do any sanding here is reposition this and cut out a couple of I might just putty this one but we'll cut out a couple of the patches here that we're going to replace in All right, so I've got all of my patches cut out. They're a little more patches than I wanted to do, to be honest. This isn't exactly going the way I liked it to, but anyways, um, I decided to take out this whole area with those putty spots. I'll need to do a little bit of work on the substrate as things were glued down, it did kind of tear out a bit. So it's making me a little bit upset with this job, but that's okay. Um, so we're gonna start working on patches. I'm just gonna go all the way down here and fit each one in. Um, I think it'll be fine. We still have a lot of the original veneers down, but this obviously was missing. This is a patch here that I didn't want to have to do, but the veneer just split and um, kind of pressed together and just didn't work out. So these ones I knew I had to do, but this one and this one here are the ones that I had to add extra. This one was always here too. But anyways, it'll turn out good. Um, we'll be able to blend those in nicely. So I'm just gonna start working on fitting each piece in and trying to pick the, the best piece for the job. And uh, yeah, hopefully everything uh, blends together. Of course, these old walnut veneers are much more buttery than these new veneers that I have. So I might try to, to work with that color a little bit, but I think we'll get there. Slow and steady. Okay, so I've got all of the veneer chips uh, cut out and ready to glue in. I also stopped halfway through the day and got my nails done, so. <laughs> Anyways, so now we're just gonna get some glue underneath this and we're actually gonna be using the iron to uh, glue these down, just to heat up the glue and get it to stick right away. This is quite difficult to clamp on. I think that was probably not working for me in the first place, um, clamping a huge item is kind of difficult when you need pressure in the middle. Also, this substrate here is quite thin. So anyways, um, we're just gonna get some white glue underneath there and uh, 
get it all hot so it sticks right away. And then I think we are good to start uh, prepping this top for finish. So let's get these stuck down. All right, so I've got um, all the patches sanded and um, interlaced. There's gonna be color um, work to do on a couple of them. The newer pieces are more purpley than this um, veneer. So we'll have to do a little bit of work with those. Um, we are just having a couple more fills in some areas that we're not putting patches in. And then the seams of this patch here, a couple of just areas skinny areas around that need to be filled it looks worse than it is but it's actually a pretty good fit so these here you can obviously see they're way more purple than the surrounding walnut so we'll need to work with those and uh, we're just going to draw you know get these lines to meet up with that line and this one to come into here so you can, when you put your veneer patches in you can kind of look at what's going on in the piece and bring it on through everything that'll help uh, disguise it other things that we're going to be doing, we've got a watermark here, a couple of watermarks here, and obviously the rest of this top needs to be addressed because we've just been working on the back. So the waterfall front here, in the front, we're going to be um, stripping everything up to the bottom of that. So uh, I don't, here's something I don't like, sanding off finishes. Obviously, in this back area, there was no choice but to put, do some serious sanding. But on the waterfall front, and I'm going to turn the cabinet around to show you. Okay, so on the waterfall front, if you are to sand off this finish and come over this edge, the way these things are built is there's a ridge here and here, and it kind of hollows in between those ridges. Your sander is going to hit this veneer really hard, it's gonna hit this veneer really hard, it's barely gonna hit this and this. You're going to end up sanding right through that veneer. It's gonna be prone to popping because you're really making it too thin to even adhere. And you're just losing that profile. So although I, it's okay to sand this part off, it's quite destroyed and there's barely any finish off. So you're not really sanding finishes off. Um, it's not okay to dive your sander right into this edge use a scraper and a piece of sandpaper, you know, get the finish off first with your scraper and then come in with your hand sand and just do that. Otherwise, you're gonna wreck that profile, gouge it out with your sander. Same thing right here. Do not use your sander up against something like this. We're just going to be using a little bit of stripper to get this off so we can use our hand sanding and just gently sand that up. Like this edge is in good shape. It doesn't need a lot of sanding. So if you have to sand finishes off, um, just mind your edges and things like that. But as a, as a rule of thumb, I always use a, a chemical or a non-chemical stripper to remove most of your finish and hand sand around your details just to save what the original maker has created. Otherwise, you're gonna be damaging the piece. So uh, I'm going to be sanding off the rest. I mean, there's nothing left here. There's gonna be watermarks here and stuff. But we're gonna just feather that sanding in and then I'm gonna strip this front edge and do everything finished with hand sand. Um, and then we'll get everything cleaned up and take a look at what it looks like.
Okay, so I've got the front waterfall front all hand sanded and each edge here hand sanded, stripped everything before we did the sanding. So now I can finish with my Festool, blending in, not hitting this top here, this ridge, blending in my heavy sanding here with the patches into the front. So grab the Festool and use a 180 sandpaper and blend these two sections together. Okay, so now that the power sanding's done, I'm just gonna finish it off with 180 hand sanding. Okay, so it is fully prepped, and now we're gonna see what we've got going on. I'm gonna take some Varsol, which is paint thinner, and I'm just going to be wiping it over the whole top to see what we got to work with. And I know those patches are gonna be too dark and a different color, but I wanna see how far I actually have to work with this thing. So we had a lot of little patches and putty spots and there are some water stains. So we're just gonna get a good look at this top before we get going. All right, before it dries too much, I'll give you guys a closer look. So as I presumed, those spots need some bleaching. Um, these lighter spots are good for touch up. This one here looks like it has a few really dark spots. So I'm gonna have to work with that. And then this one needs some bleaching for sure. So, but other, otherwise, the top's looking pretty good. Not too bad in the water staining department. I think we are generally looking not too bad here. So I'm gonna use a two part bleach on these parts just uh, on those areas and see where we get with those and do a couple of touch-ups. So this is the two-part bleach. I mixed up um, Gaudi's two-part bleach. So I'm just gonna get it on these areas. I might do the whole thing after, who knows? Just so I have more room to blend with my toners. We'll see. We'll see how good this works. It's going to be a really long weekend. I've got my Lugo to, on tomorrow night. Okay, so this is dried actually over the weekend. And I think I'm pretty happy with the color. It's pretty light, so we'll have a lot of room to paint in these patches. So I'm just going to wipe it over again with the uh, paint thinner to see what our color actually looks like when we go to head on the finish, because that's kind of what it'll look. So we've got rid of a lot of the red and lightened up those patches quite a bit. The trick with matching things in is kind of getting everything to start at the same base color so that you can work everything down to the color that you're going to. And if you can get it lighter, that's even better. So that's all looking good, except for these patches actually lightened up way more than the surroundings over here, which is fine. Lighter is better than too dark. And that's all looking really good there too. Good stuff. Okay, so we're using the Verathane Special Walnut Gel Stain. That's discontinued and my lovely viewer sent me this can. So I do still have some Varsol on the surface here, so it's not gonna sink in too deep, but I'm still gonna do a test area just to kind of see what color we're getting there. Yeah, I think that's gonna be really nice. I'm actually gonna put more Varsol on it just to, so I can control the darkness of that a little bit more, but that's the right color.
Okay, this is where I stopped doing footage because I really needed to tell you guys about my pink hair. <laughs> Just kidding. This was for a party. It's like temporary dye and it's fun. Anyways, this video, this project, should I say, I don't know if you can tell in my voice, but it is not going the way that I wanted it to go. And uh, I started getting really upset with it when I took the clamps off and the veneer had those ridges and the buckles. And I kept going with the footage because I'm like, oh, maybe I'll make it better. And then I chose the wrong wood for patches. Some of my wood was really dark. Some of the grain on that one patch in the middle was like, why did you pick this grain? And then I had to do so much sanding. I was so upset with all the sanding that I had to do. Um, not that we sanded through the veneer, but that there was just a very little bit amount of veneer left after I had gone through the sanding. So I decided, I don't want to put this on the internet. I don't want to get blasted. I don't want to get uh, comments about what I should have done. I know what I should have done. I should have used a better glue. I should have used uh, the iron instead of clamping because of that shape of the thing. The, the clamping didn't work because in a large surface, clamping in the middle is really difficult, especially, which in this case, yes, the substrate is so flimsy and it's only like a half inch thick. It just bent and the veneer stayed lifted. It was glued down, but not flat and sandwiched on like I used, like I like to do. Anyways, I could go on and on about what I did wrong in this video and what I wished I had done. But in the end, I was sad that I hadn't finished the video. And I ended up calling the customer and going to her house and taking final photos because I'm gonna tell you that I knocked it out of the park when it came to the finish. The touch-ups, the color, uh, everything that happened after I was so disappointed with the veneer glue down uh, went really well. And I was really disappointed in myself that I hadn't continued the video. So what you're gonna see now is just final shots of the piece in the customer's home. Uh, unfortunately, she had a TV already on it, but I took as many pictures in a little video that I could of it. So I'm sorry you didn't see the rest of the footage of me making this look good, but thanks so much for watching so far. And I hope that you can see um, the patches and how they they evened out. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you want to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee. The link is in the description below. And as always, thank you so much, guys. You are all my favorite people. Okay, cheers. Enjoy these pictures.